Hi everybody, Amy here with 100 Plus, Abandoned Dogs of Everglades, Florida. It is 8.25 on Thursday. Hi, um, I'm sorry that I did not update you sooner, but it has been insane. I have been at the shelter in Broward Animal Care and Adoption for hours, for hours. Thanks, Zoe. Alexa, volume down. Um, I'm here at Rescue House 2, 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida. Uh, I just got everybody out several times. Everybody's quiet for now. I may have to interrupt. Um, I'm, I'm here to update all of you um, with what happened this afternoon with the cruelty case with the little puppy um, at 1619 Northwest 6th place in Lauderdale. First of all, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that took the time to make a phone call or sent an email because your voice was heard. Your voice was heard. Uh, we are not out of the woods by any means as of right now. As you know, um, we were tagged in a puppy that was locked. You can't hear me. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I'm just tired and I'm sad, Cynthia. I'm disgusted, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm frustrated. <clears throat> you can hear me, okay, thank you. Um, I'm trying not to speak too loud. I don't want to get the dolls, the dogs, the dolls, the dogs all riled up. They're in, they're in their rooms and they're quiet right now. <coughs> okay, so let me start from the beginning. As you know, for all of you that followed today, we were out on location in the hood. It is a very dangerous area. It is not a place that you want to be walking around. Um, there was a puppy that was locked in a cage and was out there, they said, between two and three weeks. That is what we were told from the neighbors. They witnessed it every single day. They have no reason to lie. Um, they apparently reached out and there were, there were photos circulating all over social media. Um, my wife, Carol, called me hysterical. I was in Boynton Beach doing a home check for one of our dogs when I received the call from Carol, and Carol Sablich was also on scene. Um, they headed out, and I ran after finishing the home check straight to location, which was 1619 Northwest 6th Place in Lauderdale. Um, what bothers me the most is that it was clear to, to myself, to everybody, thousands and thousands of people, were outraged watching this live video while we sat we waited for the animal control officer we waited for the authorities we did not go on to a property we did not steal we did not we, we did not do anything illegal we did everything protocol through the proper channels and still still we have to fight and fight for a little puppy who was forced to endure a life that no animal should ever know. No animal should ever live in these conditions, okay? I don't care if it's a puppy, I don't care if it's a cat, I don't care what kind of an animal it is. This puppy that was living in this crate on the grates without a pan, on a slab of cement, it was 90 degrees. We were out there, we were dripping sweat. For maybe 20 minutes we started sweating and this puppy had no relief had zero shelter, had no water, had no voice to speak for himself. Um, all of you wonderful supporters had started emailing and calling, and trust me when I tell you, it makes all the difference in the world. Power in numbers. And I will say it again, 
Everybody's angry. Everybody's heartbroken. Everybody's disappointed. When I saw, after we were there waiting, um, when I saw the animal control officer come with, with the police officer and remove that puppy and put it into the animal control truck, um, we immediately got the ID number. I sent my rescue hold to the Broward shelter. They responded. They said confirmed. They also stated, they asked me if I wanted him vetted or not vetted. I said, as is. I want him out of there ASAP. I will vet him on my own. Um, I, I know how it works. I know how the system works. There is little to zero protection for animals. There's little zero protection for people nowadays, if you notice. Um, I'm just so frustrated. First of all, I'm frustrated this puppy is sitting in a shelter right now when he could be with me, um, where he could have been vetted and been comforted and loved and in a foster home. And that's what kills me the most. Um, I left the property and as I was turning the corner, I don't know if you all saw the video, um, but I went live. There was Carol Sablich saw this dog. She called me back. I turned around. It was, I didn't even see it because, first of all, I was focusing on getting to the shelter. Um, it's on our page. It's a live video. It was a pity mix, and he was on a chain and a rope. He was in a cage. The cage was covered in a blue tarp with a slab of wood on top. There was no water. There was no food, and we lost our minds. Um, an African-American opened up his back door. There was no address visible because it was the back side of the house. And the dog was in clear distress. Um, the, the, the man opened up the back door and I said, whose dog is this? And how can you can't treat a dog like this? And the police, there was a police officer. Now, not the same officer that was on the scene for the puppy. Another canine officer canine dog canine officer was coming around the bend right there where you could visibly see him and his partner a female officer where you could clearly see this dog in distress okay and he got out of the car you saw you can go back and watch me questioning him he told me he, there was nothing he can do and let me tell you something it is bullshit the statute 828 clearly states that if a police officer or an animal control officer feels an animal is in distress, they have every right to remove that animal from the condition. He chose not to. Why? Maybe he was afraid of the dog. Maybe he just didn't give a shit about the dog. So I confronted him and he told me to take the camera off his face when I have every right to, can't, to, every right to film him. It is my choice. I can film him. It's not against the law to film. Um, I had a police officer that I've worked with many times who reached out to me privately and said, you did nothing wrong. You can absolutely film him. Um, then we had a confrontation. He was so rude to me, so rude to me. Here I am, a citizen, concerned, trying to help an animal that is suffering and being abused, and, he, and I'm the bad guy. I, he turns it into, I'm crazy, lunatic, animal extreme is and I am the bad guy. How is this happening? How, it makes you think you are absolutely crazy. And I know I'm not crazy. And I know all of you are not crazy. Um, then after that, I, I, I asked him about calling an animal control officer. And he said that there was no animal control officer. What I was referring to was when he turned around that bend, it was two seconds from where the puppy was. And the animal control officer from the puppy and the officer from that case were clearly on that location. He told me there was nobody there. So after our confrontation and the African American man literally cut the rope and dragged that dog with his ribs showing with his tongue hanging out around the front of his property, the officer chose to turn a blind eye, do nothing, say nothing, and instead be confrontational and rude to me. Now I turn, I turn my car around and I go back two steps around the bend to where the puppy was. 
and the animal control officer was. And what do I see? I see that rude officer outside of his car leaning on the animal control officer's truck talking to her. I get out of my car and he starts talking to me and I told him that the, about the statute. I told him what his duty was. <clears throat> he continued to be rude to me and told me there was nothing that he could do and that I think I know it all. Um, <clears throat> And what do I expect him to do and go on this property? I said, yes, that's exactly what I expect you to do. You see an animal abuse, an animal being abused in front of your eyes. Why are you not confronting this man? So, and I also, he's, I asked the animal control officer, the female animal control officer, I said, did you leave and come back? Because this officer stated you were not here when he drove, around, drove by. And she looked at me and she said, no, I did not. I've never left. So I looked him straight in the eye and I told him, "Now you, I said, you're, now, you're a, now you're a liar on top of everything. Now you're a liar. This is an officer that is supposed to be protecting? Shame on this officer. Disgusted in this officer. And sadly, sadly, we come across this all the time. You know we have officers that we work with. Um, several officers that we've worked with over the years that are amazing. They go above and beyond to help these animals and to help us to conquer and to stop this cruelty and to make a difference and to help the animal in need. I don't even know his name, Elise. I didn't even get his name. That's shame on me because I was so angry and I always get names and I always get badge numbers. I didn't even look at it. I don't even know his name. I don't know anything. But his karma, his karma's there. Next time you learn from every experience, trust me, next time I will get his name and badge number. Um, hold on, guys. There goes. He's one of our puppies is upset because he wants out. Grayson. Come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. You want to come sit with me on the couch? Up here. Come on. Oh, can you make it? Oh, I guess you can. Want to sit on my lap? Come on. Come on. You keep me company. Oh. Um, so, sorry, guys. I knew that would happen. With this being said, okay, Grayson, you need to sit still, honey. This is Grayson. Grayson we rescued from the kill shelter in Miami. He was in the back of the shelter, and he was going to be euthanized out of public view which we're no longer allowed to videotape in the back of the shelters anymore because they're getting called out. So now they've stopped us from videoing in the back of the shelters. That makes a lot of sense too, right? Um, <clears throat> anyways, with all this being said, I went to the shelter. I was there for, I don't even know how many hours. Um, I asked to speak to the head director, Lorelei Combs. Uh, mind you, on this video at the top, when I started, I put the case number, I posted email addresses. There are three email addresses that I'm asking each and every one of you to send an email and respectfully let them know what you feel and what you witnessed and sending this, if you believe that, I can't believe if this puppy is to go back to this owner, so-called owner, it will be a death sentence for this puppy. I'm not saying that is going to happen as of right now, but what I'm saying is it's on the table. It's on the table. Grayson, come here. Grayson, come on up here with me. Come on, Grayson. So all the emails are at the top of this video. I am not finished yet. It didn't even end there. So I went into the shelter. Lorelei Combs was not available. <clears throat> I asked, I said, I'm not leaving. I got two supervisors of animal control, um, Lori and Philip. I sat down with them for a long time. Um, yes, Carol, please do. And check on that dog that we saw today. Carol's saying she will drive back and give the neighbor a number. Please go back there and let us know if she sees anything. Um, and also that dog that was on the corner. So hear me out. While I'm at the shelter, I'm speaking to Lori and Philip, two supervisors um, for animal control, and they both told me that the owner, the owner of the dog 
showed up on location. Um, I guess after we left or as we were leaving, I didn't see anything. Um, that she wanted her dog back. Now, there was also more involved. There was a property management. And all of you that made your calls, I, I know Erica Love is one person. And I want to say thank you because she was, wow, she did not stop. Um, she got to speak and I got to speak to one of the property managers, the owner of the management company. Um, I spoke to both of them. Um, and I got a lot of information, which I will share with you in just a minute. So as I'm at the shelter, I was asking a zillion questions. And thank you, Jesse, for joining me and coming along and being by my side. Um, I was at the shelter talking to them for some time, and I was asking a lot of questions. And I asked them, how could you return this puppy back to this person? And then Lorelai Combs came out, and she was talking to them and said, well, we're going to give them... Um, an animal cruelty charge, which is over $500. And she's like, they're not going to pay it. I said, well, so what are you saying? I, oh, I, don't, I don't know where this is going. It didn't make sense to me because if you think about it, when I asked Philip about the charges, I said, so if the owner is to walk in to the shelter and wants her dog back and you issue her a citation of 500 whatever dollars it may be, is she forced to pay that fee up front before you release the dog? And he said, no. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, she can pay it. You know, she has a time period to pay it. I said, well, so she's going to walk out with her dog. She's not going to pay the fee. Um, you're giving her basically a, a free ticket to abuse her dog again. And <clears throat> I said, what if she doesn't pay the fee? He said, then we give her another citation. It goes to court. Um, and then we put a lien on her. A lien on what? She she clearly doesn't have anything. She's not going to pay her citation and the dog is going to end up back in her hands. You tell me, how does the system work? How does the system protect these animals? It doesn't. I've been in court a million times. I have fought for them in front of police officers, in front of animal control officers. Nothing, nothing. There's no protection for these dogs. You're witnessing this with your own eyes. This is the law, people. Animals are considered property. <clears throat> so now, after speaking to the property management company that were so wonderful, Rosie and Oscar, thank you. They sent me an email with their statement. They had text messages going back and forth with the tenant. Now, not the owner of the puppy. The owner's sister is the tenant that lives on this location of 1619 Northwest 6th Place. And it's her little sister that put her dog in that home and they left the dog outside. Now, the tenant, Shakira, Shakita, whatever her name is, she stated in text to the property management because the property management said you need to get there now animal control is there and you need to get there we do not tolerate first of all she was not allowed to have an animal in that rental no animals whatsoever so she went against her her lease she had an animal living outside which is cruelty it she stated it was her little sister's dog and she's been calling her to come and get the dog and she's not coming so right there is abandonment so you've got abandonment, you've got cruelty charges, and now you want to give this poor, helpless, abused puppy back to its piece of shit owner. You're going to tell me this makes any sense to any of you because I'm about to lose my mind. You're right. And I'm going to tell you something, Patricia. When I was at the shelter and I, I, I specifically asked Philip and Lori of Animal Control. And I said, let me ask you something. Why did you remove that puppy? Because I know so many cases, they don't take the dog. They don't take the dog. And I asked them, if, was it because of our massive calls and our massive emails? And he looked at me and he said, yes. To be honest with you, and I said, thank you for being honest. That it, I said, isn't it sad that it takes this? It takes this to get an animal removed from a situation where it is could be death, detrimental to their life. 
I'm reading the comments. No, I'm dealing with animal control. I sent and forwarded. I spoke to Philip this evening before he closed. I sent him an email. I said, I need to call you. It's urgent. Um, I asked him if the puppy is still there at the shelter. He said yes. We waited there for hours. We also had a news crew, Channel 4, waiting there, trying to wait and see if the owner was going to come walking in, trying to relinquish her puppy after what she forced that puppy to endure. Um, I didn't see anybody. Apparently, after I left, of course, um, Philip stated from Animal Control, she showed up. But then she had to leave. She was not able to stay. So tell me, what the hell is that? Your puppy was just taken by animal control because of your abuse. It is sitting in a kill shelter, and you went there to get your puppy, but you had to leave because you had something else you needed to do. What am I missing? Please help me understand because I can't. I feel like I'm in a twilight zone. I don't know, understand the law. I don't understand how this is happening. Um, all I can tell you is the puppy is still in the shelter. Oh, I have no idea, Lindsay, why they gave the puppy. She gave the puppy to her sister. She probably didn't have the time or the means, but then she, she it's okay to leave a puppy locked in a cage outside. It doesn't, listen, how, why do people that, that train animals and teach them for dog fighting and abuse them and... Why do they have collect? Why are they collecting hoarders? Why are they having animals? Why? Why do these people get a dog if they're going to torture and abuse and neglect an animal? Just don't get an animal. Why do you have to get a dog? Why do you have to inflict pain on these poor innocent animals? I'll never understand it either. So listen. I can go around in circles. All I can tell you, it's quarter of nine. This has been going on all day. I literally just sat home just sat down are you comfy come here are you comfy i just sat down i'm at the rescue house with the babies um i love you grayson needs a home see i need a home amy grayson is a little shih tzu we rescued he needs a home he's perfect he's a baby right see i'm three to five i'm perfect he needs a home um we're trying to make room at our two rescue houses. Every room in this house is full, and every room in the house next door is full. <clears throat> we have rescued so many dogs from such horrific situations that need loving homes, and we're not able to help so many animals just like this puppy. Um, that's why I was begging all of you. I'm like, I have no room for this puppy. I need a foster immediately, immediately. So if I am able to get this puppy, I need a foster immediately because I have nowhere to put the puppy. So I got a couple of emails offering um, and I need a foster. I'm staying positive. I have to stay positive. I can't imagine this puppy going back to its life of hell. I can't. Um, so as I stated, the last I spoke to Philip, the puppy was still at the shelter when they closed tonight. Now, whether or not she's going to go back tomorrow and try to get her puppy back. And I asked him, is there a chance that the puppy will go back? And he said, yes. I said, what, what proof? What, do you, what is she going to show that's proof that it's her puppy to begin with? Oh, she has to show proof. What proof? It's a puppy. It's not neutered. I'm sure it's not vaccinated. I would be shocked if it had a vaccine record. I, I, I can't relax. I can't. I'm trying. I have a glass of wine sitting on the table outside. I'm trying to just spend time with the babies and just calm down. Uh, my blood is boiling. All I can think of is that little puppy that's sitting in a kennel at the kill shelter with an already overcrowded full shelter when that puppy can be right here with me um, and getting everything it needs. Um, I'm asking each and every one of you. There's 320 people that are on this video right now as I am updating this case. And I'm asking each and every one of you, start writing your emails now. Send your emails, let them know your thoughts, tell them you witnessed everything, that to return that puppy back to that owner would be a death sentence. And that blood is on their hands at animal control if they do that. There is no reason that puppy should ever go back to a living situation like that. And she abandoned that dog on her sister where the puppy was not allowed. She allowed that puppy to live in those conditions. Her sister was calling her all day to come there, to come and get that puppy. And for days and days, she's been calling her to come and get her dog, and she has not answered, and she has not come to get her puppy. 
I, I have one question to each and every one of you 327 people. Are you going to take the time and are you going to write an email demanding justice for that puppy? With the case number in the email, sending it, CC everybody that I put, all the, there's three people to email. I'm asking each and every one of you to be the voice for that puppy. I cannot even fathom that puppy being returned after everything we went to to get that little helpless puppy safe today. He was, it is so hot out, guys. He was cooking in the sun. He was in direct sun on a slab of cement with feces all around him, no water, no food, trash, and not a peep out of him. Nobody could hear him. He just sat there. He gave in. He was defeated. We finally got him out of there, and to send him back would be a crime. It would be a death sentence. <clears throat> I'm asking all of you to please email and do me a favor. CC100 plus abandoned dogs at gmail.com. Let me see all of you supporting us and that you're with us so we know that we are not alone, that we can depend on you to be this puppy's voice and every other animal out there that's suffering, that we jump in our cars to go and try to make a difference and save their life and fight and fight and fight and give every ounce of energy that we have, every single Every single piece of us is dedicated. Every bit of our, every fiber is dedicated to these animals. And we need to know that you are with us. So uh, please, he was so happy to be in that animal control truck. And he was wagging his little tail and he just wanted to be touched. Please don't let that puppy go back. For any of you that are watching, send your emails now. Please, if you have not watched the videos from today go back there's two to three videos go back and watch watch what we went through to get that little puppy safe please i'm begging of all of you and carol if you can i don't care don't go alone but please go back and check on that puppy um check on that dog that was around the corner see if he's outside try to get an address they told me to call if we can get an address, if the dog is still out there. God only knows where that pity ended up. God only knows. I'm counting on all of you. The email addresses are here. I'm going to shut down. Um, I'm going to also edit it and add our email so you can please add us in the same email so I can see that we have your support. Please, at 100 plus abandoned dogs at gmail.com. Please don't let this puppy go back. Please go, don't go down without a fight for this puppy like we are. I'm begging each and every one of you. We can make a difference. I promise you. We've done it so many times, but it takes so much work and follow through. You can't drop the ball. You can't say, well, I tried and it is what it is. No, it's not. You've got to continue to be the voice and you've got to continue to fight. Please, each and every one of you. And thank you. This is Amy with my update 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida. I'm counting on all of you. I want to see those emails go out tonight. <clears throat> and I promise you every step of the way, every update that I get, I promise you, I will make you aware of everything. I will live. I will do live. I will update you just as I always do with everything, everything. And thank you in advance 100 plus. Abandoned Dogs of Everglades, Florida. This is Amy, and I thank you for starting to write these emails. Let your voice be heard, guys. Th this is all we, all they have is us. Keep the pressure on. You have to keep the pressure on if you want a positive outcome. Do not, I repeat, do not let this fall into the side and let it get shoved under the rug because the puppy's going to pay the price. You can't sit back and ignore. You cannot not do anything. You have to do something. Share and please, please email. 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida. This is Amy at almost 9 o'clock on Thursday with our update on the puppy. The cruelty case. 1619 Northwest 6th Place, Lauderdale. Thank you guys.